Today we'll look into three composition mistakes that beginner photographers do and how to quickly fix them to make your images better. Hey guys, welcome back. If this is your first time here, my name is Luca and I'm a stock photographer and videographer and I'm selling my photos and videos online on iStock and Getty Images and I'm also making these videos about photography, stock photography, videography, camera gear, so yeah, if you like this kind of content, subscribe to my channel. Okay, uh, so let's move to today's topic. Composition, uh, tips, mistakes uh, and how to correct them to easily improve your photos. I recently worked with a few different photographers to help me on my stock photo shoots. Not professionals, but also not total beginners. And when I went through the photos after the shoot, uh, I noticed some composition related things that obviously I was not so happy with. Uh, and then I realized I was also making this same or similar mistakes in the beginning, but I've already forgotten about them and if I've done that and those photographers are doing that I thought that probably other beginners are doing that as well uh, so it might be helpful to share these mistakes here with you uh, that way you can avoid them or at least become aware of them if you're making them too so you'll be able to fix them uh, so yeah, uh, let me know down in the comments if you'll find yourself making any of these mistakes or if you're not, you can also write that down. So, uh, mistake number one, shooting from your eye level. If you shoot with a DSLR camera, you probably look through the viewfinder when you're shooting. So the most convenient way to shoot is to lift your camera to your face and shoot and this angle can be good in some cases for example if you're shooting people standing up from the waist up or something similar but uh, usually it's not the best angle on my stock photo shoots people are often sitting down in an office or in a living room or on a bench in the city and for those scenarios uh, shooting from your eye level means that you're shooting down on your subject and images shot from this angle usually won't be very interesting and let me tell you why uh, first thing is that there's not enough depth in the image because usually there will be floor or something not very interesting in the back behind your subject. But uh, if you lower the camera angle, you get much more depth into the image. You will get windows or some other interesting things in the back and that will make your image more interesting. Second thing is that also in the movies, for example, with this camera angle, they usually want to emphasize that the person is insignificant, in depression, suffering or similar. If you watch a lot of movies and you pay attention to that, you will definitely notice that. And on the other hand, if you shoot a person from their eye level or even a little bit upwards, the person will look strong and powerful. And third thing is that this is the angle from which we are seeing the world, so uh, we are very familiar with it, so it won't be very interesting. So yeah, uh, try to shoot at least from the model's eye level or try to go even a little bit lower to make your shots more interesting. But also don't exclude shots from above. Uh, sometimes they can be great, but usually you'll have to go higher, so above your eye level. And also top-down shots can look great and they have a lot of sales potential in stock photography, so definitely get those angles too. Uh, if you remember from my bestseller video, uh, one of my three bestsellers is a top-down shot and if you haven't seen that video I'll link it up uh, here I think and also down in description. Okay uh, mistake number two is cropping too tight. In stock photography well not only in stock photography but also in general you want to leave some space around your subject and let's see the reasons behind that. I see a lot of images cropped just above person's head or just under person's feet and in Cases like that subjects can feel claustrophobic without surrounding space. And that's especially true if you're shooting people that are moving or looking at something. When your subject is looking at something or 
moving somewhere you want to leave some space in that direction so they have some room to move into you don't want to crop the image just in front of them and another reason is context so you want to be sure to not crop out the important details details that uh, tell a story and what i mean with that is for example if you're shooting an office scene and the person is making some notes into the notebook if you crop out the table and notebook the image does not make any sense now you have an image of a person looking down at something but we just don't know what that something is so yeah not really usable image and i've seen this a lot so make sure you're not cropping out those important details so the customer will know what your image is about of course you know the context because you were there but the customer was not and in stock photography leaving some space is even more important because you never know how the customer will use your image usually customers will crop your image in different ways for example for website banner uh, instagram post instagram story or maybe they just need a horizontal image for a magazine cover so if you're cropping too tight they won't be able to use your image so yeah they won't buy it also customers are often putting some text or other elements on the image so again if there's no space for text they won't be able to use your image if you need to take a few steps back or zoom out a little bit to ensure that you have enough space around your subject do that and understand that sometimes you can't move back more than you already did or sometimes it happens also to me that you got that uh, perfect image perfect expressions emotions but uh, maybe you were just too close to your subject or you framed it a little bit too tight of course i upload this kind of image anyway because uh, emotions are much more important than framing but just try to think how to avoid these kind of situations in the future uh, mistake number three is using dutch angle uh, okay so that's actually a well-known technique because obviously it has its own name but you have to know when to use it uh, in stock photography it's better to avoid it so uh what is dutch angle well uh, it's an angle which you get by simply tilting your camera in the movies dutch angle signals that something's wrong unsettled or disorientating uh, so obviously not very useful for business or family shoots i was doing this a lot in the beginning and it was quite hard to get rid of this habit um, i just thought it was cool a little bit more dynamic uh, although i was told by getty art directors to stop doing that because it's limiting the sales potential of these kind of images and over the years i realized that yeah maybe it's really not so good to shoot this way and now when i'm shooting i make sure that the horizon is straight not slanted and if sometimes i get this feeling that a subject will look great with a tilted horizon usually when i'm editing i realize that it was not such a good idea of course you will also sell images that are tilted so you can shoot those too but make sure that you also have a leveled version of that same photo because customers are usually using images with straight horizons not tilted so you have much more chances of selling your image if you shoot straight leveled images and if you combine mistakes number two and number three so cropping too tight and tilting your camera which i also did in the past then uh then you're screwed <laughs> then uh, you or a customer can't level the horizon in post because you would have to crop in even more and the result is an even more unusable image okay so those are three mistakes so shooting from your eye level cropping too tight and tilting your camera let me know down in the comments if you're making any of these mistakes and also if you find anything useful here and please click that like button if you did if you want to learn more about stock photography click on this playlist right here and also subscribe to my channel for more content like this thanks for being here and for all the support and i will see you in my next video Bye.